political decisions are quite important to the lives of everyone. In fact, political decisions affect the economy because the decision of politicians eventually affect how things will play out uh, in the economy. So it's important that we look at this as much as possible and to draw that nexus between the polity and the economy, which is what this show is all about. Uh, so today on the program, the president had actually made mention of the issue of state police uh, with the governors. And he's talked about the fact that despite what is going on, there should not be importation of food that the governors should do their best to provide uh, for their people and not import commodity. They've also ruled that the issue of price control in terms of control mechanism so that that element of free market continues to play out as much as possible. Those are some of the things that, uh, ha that happened in the polity uh, in the past few days. Also, uh, some lawmakers are pushing, about 60 of them are pushing for the fact that we need to revisit the issue of our system of government, moving away from the presidential to the parliamentary system of government. Uh, we're going to explore that issue. But first, before we dig down, deep, dive deep into that issue uh, with my guests, who are two former lawmakers, let's talk to a former presidential candidate. Uh, I'm talking about Omar Yale Shore, who joins us from Abuja studio a few days ago. Uh, the federal government discontinued their case against him. It bordered on treason over the Revolution Now protest about five years ago. The judge has actually said, uh, if the federal government is not ready to continue with the case, uh, it will be thrown out. And the day after the case was actually uh, withdrawn, the federal government withdrew their case. Uh, the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, talking about uh, Latif Agbemi, actually wrote for the discontinuation of that trial. Uh, Mr. Shore, thank you so much for joining us on the program. And let's say to you, uh, happy birthday to you. We understand today is your 53rd birthday. So let me begin by saying happy birthday to you, Omar Elish Hore. Thank you very much uh, for that. And uh, thanks for being I thought because it's your birthday, you should be smiling, but you do not look like you're so excited. Uh, I'm wondering, I know that uh, uh, it's been, a, it's been, okay, I guess uh, we're having a bit of a technical issues. Okay, uh, let's get back to him. I understand we're back with him. So, I understand that, um, you know, uh, it's been five years since this case has been on, and finally now uh, the federal government has decided to discontinue with this particular case, pursuing the issue of treason against you due to the Revolution Now protest that occurred uh, about five years ago. I want to get your first reaction to how it feels to finally be free from all of this. Well, uh, I want to say clearly that... Uh, I wasn't freed. I freed myself by ensuring that I didn't allow the government to break me. But the truth is that what they wanted was to obtain conviction without trial. That they did get. They got me restricted to Abuja for five years. I mean, to Nigeria for five years, seized my passport, and ensured that uh, my Regular life was disrupted to a large extent. It affected my family uh, immensely. A brother of mine during that period was killed under still unknown circumstances on the or Bini Road. My mom I had a stroke over this issue and she's still down. I lost uh, everything that is possible. And within the period they were doing all this, they broke my nose, the you see scar on my face, they shot at me with a federal riot gun. And they came to court in 2019, the DSS, abducted me in front of a judge. If uh, that is not punishment, then what is punishment? That's the question. But I did not break, and I didn't let them break me. And that's the only good news I have for all of you. But there's nothing that wasn't expected. We knew that this would happen, that uh, those in government at that time, led by Buhari, would do everything to shut anybody down who was opposed to that ruinous regime uh, and the political party in power at that time, which had continued to today. So I want to find out from you now that, uh, you know, this is quote unquote over, uh, are you going to still look at this campaign that you started in 2019 about the need for a revolution. Are you going to now say, okay, uh, it has had its time, let's not let it go, and let's face other option of effecting better governance in the system? 
It's no longer a campaign. The revolution has become a reality now. Even those who were opposed to me in 2019 are now calling for a revolution. Anybody who is asking for a parliamentary system of government somehow wants to change Nigeria. Uh, it's some kind of a revolution, too. Uh, those who are asking for the two bicameral legislative system to be shut down and combined into one are asking for... Those who are asking for... Uh, this country to be restructured, are asking for a revolution because all of this would have to change the constitution. But don't get me wrong, that is not the revolution I'm asking for. The revolution I'm asking for is for this system that's unjust, unfair, and killing our people to come to an end. And that's, I've been very clear about. And uh, one of the things that happened in 2019, August 5th, two days after I was arrested or abducted in, in, uh, in Lagos and brought to Abuja, on a, on a jet, or on a twin-engine jet that uh, I had later uh, crashed, you know, killing uh, some Air Force officers or Army officers. Uh, five million people searched for the meaning of the revolution because then it was strange to them, the context. They didn't know what it was. But you go out now, you go on Twitter, you go everywhere, everybody is calling for a revolution because everybody is tired of this system. So I have not abandoned the campaign. I did not. It is the reason why I did not negotiate with anybody on this matter. Two weeks after I was detained, they sent a delegation to me led by Issa Funtua and Garba Sheo uh, and said that to me I should apologize to Buhari and if he would let me go. I opted to stay in detention until uh, five months later uh, when I was granted bail and they restricted to Abuja because there is no negotiation. There is no going back. I, I'm sure that everybody knows at this time that Nigeria is uh, ripe and due for a revolution. But this is, well, this is a democracy, and we have the process for which governments are changed according to law. Uh, but before I dig deep into all of that and begin to ask you some other questions, uh, is there any chance that you're going to consider running for office of president again in Nigeria? The democracy, yes. This is not a democracy. I don't think you should be saying that. Any system that cannot afford to have credible election is not a democracy. Any system that cannot grant, guarantee citizens uh, fundamental rights is not a democracy. You should go and look up the meaning of democracy. And I'm, I'm not insulting you. I mean, the basic meaning of democracy. You know that well, all well, the well, we, 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 uh, Apologies, but we, you know, we have a constitution. We're run by the rule of law. Whether that rule of law is practiced in a totality is form. We don't have a constitution. Whether it is, it is run effectively you know, in this form is a, a different kettle we, of fish. That's the premise. That's why you chose to run. We don't have a You chose to run for office rather than taking up arms to change a government. Yeah, go ahead. I'm, I just I'm, need not, to I'm not going to take up. I'm not going to take up arms. But we don't have a constitution. Let me correct you. That thing that was imposed on Nigeria in 1999 is not a constitution. It was a military uh, song of praises, SOP. You you went to uh, secondary school when we were using SOP. That one you put at the back pocket. You know. That's not a constitution. A constitution must be vetted by the people. That is why the preamble to every constitution says, we the people. Which people were there when they created the 1999 constitution? It was a military, and it was brought into effect by a decree. We don't have a constitution. Let's be very clear about that, because the more we tell the truth to ourselves, the better we feel about the way forward. We can't stay here on primetime TV and saying that you have a constitution. Who wrote the constitution? Was there a referendum? that better the constitution into it. No. So we don't have a constitution with due respect. So within the premise of civil rule and all of that, what do you propose besides this advocacy for revolution that we can do to effectively make sure that I don't our have people a, have... I wish I have an alternative to sell you. I wish no, they, I have they, an alternative they, they, to sell you. I don't have an alternative to give you. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, so yeah, let, no let's 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 go to other issues. I, I'm sure you've had an experience with the law as well as the law enforcement agencies as well as the judiciary. What will be your own assessment? Because the same uh, laws under which you were taken into custody is the same. Uh, is some pers some person in the judiciary that says, "Say, look, let this let this man go if you don't have any case against him." So, what's your assessment of the judiciary? It is not. It is not the judiciary that let me go. It is not the judiciary. I it is a pronouncement of a ago. judge. And I that, spoke to uh, the this... judge. I told the judge. Go ahead, sir. I told the judge. I told the judge to dismiss the case. That was a useless case. The judge gave another adjournment till April 15. It wasn't the judiciary that let me go. It was because 
I had bought my own freedom by refusing to back down. And they realized that this was not going anywhere. And it's important to mention that my lawyers took a position on this too, Femi Falano. He made it clear from day one that nobody can prosecute this case because there will be no evidence and that they were just wasting their time. We told them that five years ago. So what they did was to violate their own rules, laws, and they violated the judiciary. So which judiciary? Is it the judge whose wig was flying in the air when I was abducted in the judge that you are calling the judiciary? No, they don't believe in all those things. So, and this is why I have issues with how we debate this issue. I think we should all come to the conclusion that we'll not be lying to ourselves anymore every 7 p.m. on politics today. About the no, 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 no uh, Mr. Shore, nobody's lying to anyone. Of Nigeria. Uh, nobody's lying no, to anyone. No, I'm just saying that we have to take a decision, all of us, <clears throat> that we can't be saying that we have a judiciary where a citizen can be abducted in front of the judge, and the judge will call the case the next day, behave as if they didn't know that there was an abduction. No, what it, or you are talking about when I was granted bail and after I fulfilled my bail condition, I was, they refused to release me. When they released me, they came back abducted. Is that the judiciary? Or the National Assembly, led by a senator and a former House president, uh, Bami Dele, who had a, a, a sitting and determined that the DSS was and withheld the report to today. Or the Nigerian Bar Association, that made no position about my situation. But the American Bar Association sent lawyers every day to court and wrote a report that I did nothing wrong. So these are all the components of your judiciary and the law enforcement system. Is a rogue system. It's a rogue system. This is these things I'm saying to you are things that will bear uh, the witness. Mr. Shore, as to come much here and be sugar, sugar coating that you have a democracy, you have a, a judiciary, or you have a system in place that is called the rule of law. None. Well, Mr. Shore, uh, I, I am sure years old today. that I've yeah, lived just... long enough to be able to tell you the truth and damn the consequences. Whatever happens, happens okay. to me. Uh, Nobody right, sit down I, here I, I and tell you that you have a judiciary, you have a constitution. When you know there is none, we are just running a system uh, of transactions. If, if, of, if, if, you know, if I can butt in here, uh, so, that, so that we are clear, uh, your position is well respected. Yeah. Uh, but the truth is that we have laws governing our country. We have the judiciary, we have law enforcement. We don't. What are the elements? Well, we just hold on. Just hold on for a minute for me, sir. That we call laws. Just... Just whether the elements within these uh, institutions uh, play their role effectively or not is another kettle of fish. That's why we're having this conversation to make this democracy as robust as possible because civility is only the way we will go to ensure we have effective dialogue to change the country into that dream country that all of us will want to have. Not making excuses or defending the government in any way, but just to posit it there. Let's move on to other issues now uh, that has to do with... because. You have tried to run for president, and I'm sure that looking at what is going on in the country now, uh, you have your ideas as to how to get things fixed. The president has come on 29th of May last year to remove subsidy and then floated the Naira a few uh, months later. And then we're here with these challenges we are facing, and the government is saying we should be patient that things are going to shape up. The inflation numbers came up yesterday, 29.9, which is literally 30%, and it's quite difficult for a lot of people uh, if you were to be in the position, what exactly would you have done differently to make this a better situation? So th that's exactly the reason why I was having a back and forth with you. Because during the election, I was here on your show, uh, and I was discussing about the economy, how and why you should not float the Naira. And the response was that I was inexperienced, that I don't know what I'm saying. As a matter of fact, the more I spoke, the less airtime I got from uh, the national media during the election. They prefer people who come here and lie to you. I had stated it clearly that this way was the highway to hell for Nigerians. Removal of subsidy. I was the only candidate in the 2023 election that said I won't remove subsidy I will, because there's none. I'll remove the people who are stealing subsidy. And that is exactly what I was going to do. And I said, I won't float the Naira. In fact, I will revalue the Naira. Because that's what they did in all these countries across Africa. But you, are, you guys are more comfortable with all these fake economists that come on your shows and lie to you that if you remove subsidy, people's life will be better. You are going to have a highway from Lagos to Maiduguri. They remove subsidy now for how many months? Where is the highway? Where are the schools? You know, where is the, where's, where, where's, where's the level of uh, poverty in the country? 
Have they created employment? No. Has insecurity improved? No. But you don't like to talk to us. You don't like to repeat. I, I could just sit back home and I'd be having fun. I say, I play everything I said during the election. The few times I had the chance to speak, when I told you that the IMF and the World Bank have nothing to offer this country, I told you guys where we could get money from without ways and means. I told you that the Central Bank of Nigeria was a glorified guru to change, where people just go and collect money and change it. They are the ones who crashed in Naira. It is those people who have dollars and they are holding it. You cannot have a Central Bank of Nigeria that is engaging in retail banking. The major banks in the country, as I heard the body judge said even recently, all the bank MDs are just doing what they call round tripping. They collect Naira in the money, hold it. They are, it's the same Central Bank that's supposed to be in charge of okay. the monetary policy that also runs the BDC. So they collect the money and in the, in the, they, they change the price or they hold it and then the price goes up and they make their money. All right, Why would all right, anybody right. want to build a factory okay. if they can wake up and make 300 million naira in a day because they are related to the president of the country? All, all right. of these guys have BDC. Senators, you know, House of Rep members, ministers, right, Mr. you know, the central bank governor yes. of that if period that none of you want to talk about. He's in jail now, accused of stealing six million naira to election observer. I didn't know that Nigeria was paying election observers. All right. But when All I was saying it in those days, we're, we're, you guys don't want to hear me. That's the truth. Mr. Shore, uh, we're totally out of time. No, no, no. It's not as if no, it's democracy. Everybody has a right to speak. Uh, why I try to butt in as much as possible when you make your submission is that uh, we can dis just, just hold on, Mr. Shore. We can disagree with that disparaging me. the integrity yes. or... Uh, the persons of maybe an economist and all of that. You have your position, they have theirs. It's also aggregated right here on the program and the audience will be able to make sense of the situation. Uh, you know, but, you go and play back your tapes and uh, know all the economists that come here to lie to you. And every money show... That is, a, that, that, that is exactly that what I'm saying. That, subsidy life will be better. That is exactly what I'm saying, that <laughs> we, we can... We can do all of I have this an opinion about it, and I'm sharing it with uh, the country. People's uh, professionalism. Mr. Shore, I must thank you I'm so not much. Disparaging them. Today. I'm not disparaging them. I'm just telling you the truth that these guys don't it's know okay. economics. They it's don't. okay. And stop uh, bringing them. And today is your birthday, your so uh, to I want to let you go better. early so you can continue celebrations. I know we had to pull you out. Uh, yeah, we had to But we're going to have this conversation even further now that all of this case is off the table so we can have more conversation. I hope they let you bring me back, you know, NBC. What did you say? Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. <laughs>